hi guys welcome back and this is curve here first of all i would like to wish all of you a very very happy new year uh so if you see this is my first video of the year 2022 and on the request of my viewers i have prepared this video to share my experiences about my psle journey in the year of 2018 and all the tips about how i achieved my dream my goal of it of uh, getting admission into raffles institution so a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step this phrase is well said by the chinese philosopher lao tzu and i hundred percent agree with him so the agenda for the series of videos i would be posting in the next few days is as follows but for this video we would be going specifically through how i chose my school so how did i choose my school so firstly you guys should be knowing that uh, there are three different type of streams express normal academic and normal technical so express has further three subcategories actually for the two subcategories the integrated program and the o levels and the integrated program is a program that allows students to uh, progress to univers uh, sorry to progress to junior college without having to give the o level examinations so it's you can think of it as a straight road a whole six year journey a straight road six year journey from secondary 1 to jc2 without any o levels in between but of course for the o level program you would have to take the o level at the end of secondary 4 and then again the whole process repeats like what you experienced in psle of uh, applying for different uh, junior colleges polytechnics etc and then we have the normal academic stream the uh, where we have to give the na level and the normal technical stream where we have to take the nt levels so for me on a personal note it was clear that i did not want to take the o level examinations i did not want to take the o level examinations so i wanted schools that allowed me to uh, take the integrated program right from secondary one all the way to jc2 and frankly speaking they were quite limited options they were uh, the options were quite limited for the uh, integrated program schools so this actually helped me to narrow to, uh, to narrow down my selection options significantly because of the fact that there are very less schools in singapore which offer the integrated uh, program so now this uh, the following uh, this slide would be a simplified roadmap of your education journey after p6 so, cur so currently you guys would be over here in the primary phase and after your successful s1 posting or dsa or dsa application you would have uh, you would go to either the express stream the normal academic stream or the normal technical stream and in the express stream you would have the integrated program uh, where we have schools such as you know ri rgs Huachang institution victoria school uh, uh dunman high school national junior college river valley high school and the list goes on and on so i won't be uh saying the whole list out if you want you can check that out on the uh, moe website and for the IB schools, we have, okay, so actually there are two types of IB programs. I won't be going into detail. Again, to check that out, you can go to the MOE website. Yeah, but for the IB schools, we have ACS Independent and St. Joseph Institution and also Methodist Girls School. Plus, yeah, we also have the uh, NUS High School of Maths and Science and then for yeah and then we have the o level schools right and now for the na uh, stream you would have to give the na levels after your uh, at the end of your fourth year and then again for the nt levels uh, the nt stream you would have to give the nt levels at the end of your fourth year so now those in the express stream they can choose to go to junior college you have ip Oh, sorry. You have IP, IB, and O-level students, which progress to junior college. 
However, the O-level students do have an option to go to Polytechnic or even ITE if they wish. They don't specifically have to go to JC. I think I forgot to uh, draw an arrow for here. But from O-level, it's also possible to go to ITE. And then, yeah, but for those in NT, if you want to uh, prepare for the NA levels, you can stay back for one year. And those in the NA can stay back for one year to prepare to prepare for the O levels. So yeah, after JC, you'll take your A levels at the end of your uh, at the end of your second junior college year, and then you can apply for either a local university or a foreign or or a foreign university. So for me, I wanted the first path of Express. That would let me to go uh, to progress to JC without O levels, so that I can take my A levels and go to university so this is my current plan my current goal to go into a, a good university at the uh, after my a levels so which is why i chose ri because i chose raffles institution because they allow they offer the ip program so yeah that was on me so now it depends on you which stream you want to go to what uh what end school you want to go to over in the purple in the purple section so it all depends on what choice you want to make so yeah and then another factor that uh, that like you would want to look at when choosing your school would be your, uh, the distance from home so personally I wanted to go I wanted to go to a school that is not too far from my house like you know a distance that can be covered in about 30 minutes by public transport so the reason is that I have heard from my friends and I will say okay so when I was choosing my schools uh, when I was choosing my school I had heard from my friends that there are a lot of commitments in secondary school and when I came to secondary school I found out that they were correct because we have uh, CCAs, project works, stay back on certain days and CCAs are given high importance in secondary school because of something called the national school games i would be explaining that in the in uh, a while so don't worry about that but yeah so these project works the ccas other activities after school they're quite demanding uh, they are quite demanding in terms of effort and time so you would be dismissed late on certain days but now in uh, in consideration of the covid new smm rules Things might have changed a little, but you would be dismissed late on certain days. That's undeniable. So yeah, longer distances means you would travel more, and shorter distances means you would travel less. So a good gauge for traveling between your house and school by public transport should be around 40, uh, 20 to 45 minutes. So for me, when I want, uh, when I like decided that a good that I wanted to travel no more than 30 minutes between my house and my school I had to find schools which were within the vicinity of my neighborhood and it so happened that Raffles Institution arrives about 20 minutes from my house and I don't know if this is a good for if this was my fortune or it is my luck but uh, in 2018 at the start of 2018 a new bus service started operating that uh, that allows passengers to commute straight from my condo to Raffles Institution. So that was one thing that uh, helps. Us. So that is one thing that helps me to get to school on time. To get to school on time. So yeah, and then you might also want to look at the different CCAs offered. That uh, yeah, you might want to look at the different CCAs offered in the schools. Because CCAs are given high importance in secondary schools, you know, due to national school games. So yeah, now coming back to the national school game points, uh, the national schools, the, sorry, the national school games point. <laughs> so this is a uh, sort of inter-school competition between various schools in between various schools in Singapore regarding sporting activities. So we have track and field, uh, rugby, swimming table tennis, basketball, badminton, cricket, etc. And in secondary school, they're given quite high importances. Oops. 
Now, of course, different schools would offer a variety of a different variety of CCs. What I mean is that let's say we have two secondary schools, uh, A and B. School A offers, let's say, badminton, uh, track and field, and basketball. And school B offers badminton, swimming, and let's say, table tennis. So now you would want to consider between schools A and B which CC you want to go to. If you want badminton, you have two choices, A and B. But if you want track and field, you only have choice A. If you want swimming, you only have choice B. So yeah, that is what I mean by uh, different schools would offer a different variety of CCs. So now we have different categories as well. You have sports, uniform groups, and performing arts. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, speaking for myself, I wanted to take cricket as a CC. So, and uh, there are not many schools in Singapore which offer cricket as a main CC. I think there are hardly six or seven schools which offer. And when I was deciding, I was... Uh, when I was deci when I was deciding, the schools I saw that had cricket were ACS Independent, Raffles Institution, uh, Victoria School, St Andrews, and St Patrick Secondary Schools. So there were ha there was hardly any choice left, and this also helped me to narrow down my choices. So now after this, you might also want to look at the different subjects offered in the different schools. So different schools would naturally offer a variety of, of uh, subject combinations to cater to the needs of the students entering that school. So like, you know, some, stu uh, some schools allow students to take three sciences in secondary three, and other schools allow students to take only up to two sciences. Now for me, I wanted to take three sciences in secondary three, and I didn't want to limit myself to just the option of taking only two out of three sciences. So that is one reason why I chose Raffles Institution because in secondary three, when we get to choose our own subjects, we are given with the option to choose our own. Uh, sorry, yeah, we are we given, are given with the op we are given with the option to take uh, up to three sciences. So yeah, so that is why I took I chose RI as well, and other than the compulsory subjects which are math english mother tongue sciences and humanities there are some schools which offer electives mm, i think i forgot to mention this fact but in secondary school unlike primary where you, where you have science as one whole subject in secondary school th this science is divided into three further subjects we have chemistry physics and bio so that is what i meant by triple science or two sciences triple science or double sciences yeah and other than the compulsory subjects there are some schools which offer electives what I mean is computers arts music uh, sorry food and food and design oh no sorry uh, food sciences not food and design my bad food sciences uh, business studies etc so you might want to look at those subjects as well if you are interested to take up them uh, to to take them up so for me i wanted to take computers so i because i had and i still do have a passion for coding and i was glad when i uh, read about it that ri offers computers arts and music as an elective subject so yeah, that was an another thing which motivated me to join this school. Because I wanted a school that offers a variety of subjects rather than just focusing on the main academic subjects like math, English, mother tongue, science, humanities, etc. So yeah. And this humanities, just on a side note, is split up into three, si into three, three or four subjects. We have geography, literature, English literature, uh what else is it? yeah social studies and history yep so yeah that was it for this video okay uh before ending i would also like to point out that 
uh, in one of my previous slides. Yeah, here. So I forgot to mention this earlier. I'm sorry about that. But uh, everyone would have to go through this process of PSLE. It's not like if you have taken DSA, if you have completed DSA, if you have successfully been uh, selected by a school through DSA, you don't have to take PSLE. No, you would have to take PSLE, but it's just that if you are selected by a school through DSA, you need you need a minimum uh, a minimum score, a minimum set of points to enter. So, for example, if if we have school A. Which usually accepts students between a cut of uh, between a score of seven to let's say twelve, and this is for the non DSA students. But if you uh, are successful through DSA, then maybe they might accept students from the range of twelve to fourteen, fourteen points. So so something like that. You need to get at least fourteen points for your DSA application for your D uh, for you to for you to be able to enter that school so it's like you can enter the school at a lower at a lower point D you get what i'm saying right you don't specifically have to score within that uh, range of points range of cutoff points the school would usually inform what is the minimum scoring range for you to enter that school through dsa yeah and the schools which Accept students only through DSA are SST and uh, NUS High. They only accept students through DSA, but yes, if there are some still, if there are some seats that are still available for students even after the DSA posting, the students might apply for these schools based on their PSL score after the uh, results have been released. I mean that was what. Uh, used to go on in my year. I'm not exactly sure if that would still be applicable uh, this time, but I would advise you guys to check the respective websites of the schools. So yeah, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching my video and do stay tuned for my next part, which I would be releasing in a few days, on how I set a goal to get into my dream school. So this set of videos I'm releasing is not just a one is it's not just a single video but it's something like a series of videos dedicated to my PSLE journey so that I can guide many aspiring students like you all to get into your dream school. So do stay tuned for my next video until then goodbye.